so much, Caroline, and thanks everyone at CAT and to the other speakers on the panel. I'm really glad to be here with everyone today to have this really important conversation. And thank you to everyone who's come from their homes to attend the event. Really looking forward to your thoughts and questions once we've all spoken. So yeah, I'm Mel, I'm part of Greenpeace UK and I head up our oil campaign. So I'm gonna talk a bit about some work that we've been doing as part of our wider climate work and how that relates to the question, the idea of security. And then I'm gonna go on to talk about a particular campaign that we've worked on with Friends of the Earth Scotland. So it's actually great to see so many people from Scotland dialing in today and Platform London that's been looking at the particular experience and role of high carbon workers in the transition away from oil and gas that's necessary if we're going to tackle climate change. And then I will also say a, a few brief words about how did these questions relate to the government's idea of security given the way that it treats migrants and refugees in this country at this time. So to start with the climate crisis, this in essence is the biggest threat to our shared security. The threat that the climate crisis poses is the loss of lives and livelihoods on a scale never known before across the world. People in the climate movement, as many of you will know, I'm sure have been fighting for decades to try to stop climate wrecking companies, particularly those in the high carbon sectors and governments around the world from worsening climate change and producing this great risk to all of our security and safety. When I first got involved in climate activism, it was actually 15 years ago in Scotland um, when the G8 summit was held in Scotland and many of us were out on the streets demanding that governments around the world take climate action and try and stop climate change altogether. We were trying to stay within zero degrees of global heating. But now we're at a point where, although governments and companies around the world have acknowledged that climate change exists and climate denialists no longer get space on media platforms, we're now struggling to try and stay within 1.5 degrees of global warming. So why do these 0.5 degrees of warming count so much? Well, each 0.1, degrees leads to greater loss of life and livelihood around the world. People's homes, people's families, people's neighbors and communities, all their lives will be at threat because of the various aspects that the climate crisis brings from flooding to fires, to um, loss of um, habitats around coastlines around the world. So at this point, this decade, we're really trying to, on account of the advice of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, to stay within 1.5 degrees. And that means that this decade, we need to half global carbon emissions. And that means big changes, and it requires a transition because if you were to turn off all that infrastructure overnight, that would have a, a really harmful impact on people's lives <laughs> because right now our uh, hospitals and schools and the way we get food is all quite reliant on infrastructure that involves fossil fuels. So I want to go on to talk about how do we start beginning that transition in a fair and just way. So because we've campaigned on the oil industry for a long time, trying to get oil companies to decrease production of oil and governments to stop licensing new production of oil, we wanted to ask 
what does this mean for the workers who've put their lives into this industry that in our current society is key work <laughs> it's you know it's hard work it's dangerous work it's out at sea on rigs where people are at risk of injury and it's part it produces the energy that enables all of our lives to to keep moving now that doesn't mean that we can't question or challenge this industry but it is important for us to recognize the important role that workers have played in keeping society going so together with platform london um, who you can look up online there and um, energy democracy campaigning organization and friends of the earth scotland who are the scottish branch of the global friends of the earth movement together we said okay let's ask oil workers <laughs> what they think about the transition away from fossil fuels in order to tackle the climate emergency and so last summer when we knew that many workers had lost work due to the oil price crash which followed the start of the pandemic we said how are you doing <laughs> knowing that people were at home um, we called them up and we had conversations to say how has this impacted you what does the future look like to you what do you want the future to look like and we were able to get 1400 offshore oil and gas workers to respond to the survey the finding of findings of which you'll you'll see in a report called offshore and i'll pop the link in the chat shortly and what this showed was that overwhelmingly workers in that industry are actually having a really tough time morale is really low 81 percent said that they would consider leaving the industry and over half of them said they'd like to gain work in renewables or um, offshore wind they said that the most important thing for them in a job was job security and that's exactly what they're lacking now in the oil industry because far from the glory days of the 80s the work now is very casualized so lots of workers are on zero hours contracts without any rights or protections for their working conditions this is a huge challenge to security in the transition because as we start to phase out oil and gas production there becomes a greater risk to those workers health and safety at work when companies start to squash the bottom line start to make cuts and put pressure on workers when there's less money to be made at the same time there needs to be huge government investment to unlock the scale of jobs that will be needed to replace those that people had in the oil and gas industry and find new work in offshore wind, renewables and green energy onshore. So I encourage people to take a look at the findings of the report itself. There's some case studies in there so that you can hear directly from workers. But I think the key thing for us here is that we're trying to explore, well, what does security mean for this group who are at the kind of front line of the transition and changes that we have to make so that we don't put <laughs> the whole world's lives at risk because of climate change. And that's the, the question that we're trying to get into. Perhaps we'll get into the question of the hostile environment more when we, we get into the discussion after the speakers, but I will just briefly say that the very fact of the government's treatment of refugees and migrants by holding people in appalling conditions in army barracks around the country by the 
Home Secretary suggesting that it could be a good idea for the UK to follow Australia's appalling practice of holding migrants and refugees offshore in absolutely horrendous conditions and the conditions on Maru have been widely criticized around the world. This shows us that this is not a government that fundamentally cares for people. And that's what the base question has to be in our campaigns is, what are we doing that's about caring for people, people's lives, people who've suffered so much already and that security really has to be about care. So I'll stop there and I look forward to the discussion going on today. Thanks.